inside of the Docker Compose file for the sample application we're building here, we can see that I've used four containers, Nginx, PHP, Redis, DB. Now, Nginx and PHP are two containers I've built for the purpose here, and we're gonna see how we built those. I've also used the official image for Redis and the official image for MySQL, and those are all coming from the Docker Hub, the official repository for various containers. So if I search for MySQL, I see there's an official MySQL one, and that is the one I've used with the tag 5.7 specifically, and that'll get me the latest 5.7 version of MySQL. You can see there's lots of tags we can use too, so I could use 5.7.15 or latest, or I've gotten older versions, 5.6, 5.6.3.3. Those are all possibly defined here, which is the tag of the image. So we have the image name itself and then the tag. By default, if we don't define a tag, it'll just use whatever is latest. Here we can see these are equivalent. So five latest, 5.7, 5715. These will get uh, almost always the same version of the MySQL image at the time that you pull it. So what I've done here is just use the official MySQL repository. I've used 5.7, just the generic tag there. And I've read the documentation on how to set it up. Basically you pass it some environment variables. This will set some defaults when it creates a new database, when it initializes a new container. If you use a data volume like this and destroy the containers and then recreate that, the volume still persists. Remember from our last video, the varlib MySQL directory will get populated from whatever is in that data volume, and that will persist even though you've destroyed a container and recreated a new one. Now, because the varlib MySQL directory will be populated with MySQL files already from that saved volume, this environment variable stuff won't matter because the MySQL container sees that that already exists and just uses it to start up MySQL. Now, that is not a standard Docker thing. That is something that the official image of MySQL does specifically. When it starts up, it will actually run this command docker entrypoint.sh, which handles a lot of logic to figure out whether it needs to initialize a new MySQL database or just use one that currently exists. So if you want to read the documentation here more carefully, you can find out other magic that it can do also. Redis is much more simple. I used the official repository again. I just did the latest, or actually we should see, I did Alpine. So Alpine is Redis based off of an Alpine virtual machine or an Alpine container, an Alpine image. Alpine is a popular one for official images because it is so small. So basically what I did is I grabbed a very tiny um, base image and on top of that image they have built uh, Redis. And the Alpine tag we can see up here is down here it is running 3.2, which is the latest of Redis. And the Alpine builds are really nice for production usage because once again, they're tiny. So doing things like downloading the images and uh, updating to them is a very quick process because of that. We don't have the heft of maybe the entire Ubuntu operating system, for example. Now, let's go on to the other ones. If I search for shipping Docker, we'll find my two that I created, Nginx and PHP. So in the next videos, I'm going to show how I created both the Nginx and PHP, and then finally I'll show how I got them up to Docker Hub so that we can use them later.